Both each effect tells that with increase in heart rate, the force of cardiac contraction increase with each heartbeat. Bowditch effect, also known as trapper phenomenon or staircase phenomenon, or as frequency-dependent activation. To explain Bowditch phenomenon, we have to know the normal physiology of cardiomyocytes contraction, and there are a few crucial steps. So it's cell membrane, it's sarcoplasmic reticulum, and when neural stimulus reach sarcolemma, which is the cell membrane of cardiomyocytes, it causes depolarization of cell membrane by activation of voltage-gated sodium channels. And because sodium is extracellular ion, sodium is going by concentration gradient into the cell. So with depolarization of cardiomyocytes, sodium is going into the cell. Very important that this sodium will be extruded from the cell by sodium potassium ATPase. Depolarization activates dehydropyridine receptors on the cellular membrane, which are L-type calcium channels. And with the activation, calcium channels open, and because calcium is also extracellular ion, by concentration gradient, calcium is going into the cell, and this results in increase in intracellular calcium level. So the second step is sodium-induced increase in intracellular calcium level. Increase in calcium concentration in the cytosol activate ryanodine channels on sarcoplasmic reticulum. With activation, ryanodine channels open, and calcium that is stored in sarcoplasmic reticulum by concentration gradient massively going into the cytosol. This process called calcium-induced calcium release and results in massive increase in calcium level in the cytosol. So the third step is calcium-induced calcium release that causes substantial increase in calcium level in the cytosol. Calcium binds to troponin molecule. Troponin induces conformational changes in tropomyosin molecule and changes in tropomyosin conformation expose binding sites on actin molecule, and this permits myosin molecule to bind to actin binding sites. It creates actin-myosin bonds that subsequently develop peak muscle tension, and this results in contraction. To explain this, there is actin molecule, and there are myosin molecules, and there are binding sites on actin molecule. But in relaxed state of cardiomyocytes, they are covered by tropomyosin, so basically, in resting state, tropomyosin does not permit myosin to bind to actin binding sites. But there is such molecule as troponin. Troponin regulates tropomyosin conformation. And the only thing that affects troponin is calcium in the cytosol. If calcium level in the cytosol is low, troponin does not induce any changes in tropomyosin molecule and actually it's relaxed state. But if only calcium level in the cytosol sufficiently increase, troponin binds calcium molecules and induce conformational changes in tropomyosin. By this term we mean that troponin changed disposition of tropomyosin in relation to actin. And with these changes in tropomyosin, binding sites on actin molecules become exposed. So now myosin can bind to actin binding sites, this creates actin-myosin bonds, that subsequently develop peak muscle tension, and this results in contraction. Very important concept. The higher calcium concentration in the cytosol, the more calcium molecules are available to bind to troponin. The more troponin affects tropomyosin conformation, the more binding sites on actin molecule become exposed. The more myosin molecules can bind to actin molecules, and the higher number of actin myosin bonds the higher the peak muscle tension, the higher the force of contraction. So basically the point is, the higher the calcium level in the cytosol, the higher is the force of contraction. But after contraction, relaxation of cardiomyocytes must occur. And to relax, calcium level in the cytosol has to decrease. This decrease in calcium in the cytosol occurs by two mechanisms. By sodium-calcium exchange on sarcolemal membrane, and by sarcoprotein that is located on sarcoplasmic reticulum and pumps calcium from the cytosol back into sarcoplasmic reticulum. First of all about sodium-calcium exchanger. This exchanger is located on the cellular membrane and provides export of one calcium molecule out of the cell for three sodium molecules that are going into the cell. So basically sodium-calcium exchanger exchange one calcium molecule for three sodium molecules. Recall that sodium and calcium are extracellular ions, and because of that, 
export of calcium from the cellular cytosol to extracellular space is going against concentration gradient, and every process that is going against concentration gradient requires energy, usually provided by ATP molecule, unless this energy is provided by simultaneous transportation of another molecule by concentration gradient. And in this case, it's transportation of three sodium molecules into the cell. So because export of one calcium molecule and import of three sodium molecules occur simultaneously, this exchange does not require solar energy and function independently. But the problem is that because energy for calcium export is provided by sodium import, the activity of this exchange is hardly depends on sodium intracellular concentration and high sodium intracellular concentration decrease the activity of sodium calcium exchanger. So, for example, if sodium concentration in the cytosol decrease, the activity of exchanger increase and the more calcium molecules will be exported from the cytosol to extracellular space. And in contrast to this, if sodium level in the cytosol increase, the activity of exchanger decrease and this will cause decrease in calcium transportation outside the cell. So the more calcium molecules will be remained inside the cell. Another mechanism to decrease calcium level in the cytosol is to pump calcium back into cercoplasmic reticulum. And because calcium concentration in the cercoplasmic reticulum is higher than calcium concentration in the cytosol, this transportation will be going against concentration gradient and require a specific pump that will use ATP molecule in order to transport calcium back into sarcoplasmic reticulum. This pump called SARCA, which is sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase, and uptake of calcium by SARCA into sarcoplasmic reticulum is the major mechanism through which calcium level in the cytosol of cardiomyocytes return to original level. So, in normal condition, SARCA mechanism prevails over sodium calcium exchanger. What we have to understand is that calcium that is pumped into sarcoplasmic reticulum by SARCA is used for the next contraction. And the more calcium will be accumulated in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the higher will be calcium released during next contraction, the higher will be the force of the next contraction. And in contrast to this, Calcium that is transported by sodium calcium exchanger is going out of the cell and cannot be used for the next contraction. And once calcium level in the cytosol of cardiomyocytes decreases to the original level, relaxation occurs. So what is the mechanism of voltage phenomenon? The concept is that with increase in heart rate, the frequency of neural stimulation increases. It could increase in the rate of action potentials, or we can say it could increase in frequency of depolarization, because depolarization actually is phase zero of action potentials. And because with depolarization, sodium ions are going into the cell, with increase in frequency of depolarization, intracellular sodium concentration increase. Basically, the influx of sodium into the cells through sodium channels increased to such extent that sodium potassium ATPase cannot keep up with such sodium influx rate. So increase in heart rate cause increase in sodium level in the cytosol. And at some point when relaxation has to occur, to provide relaxation cardiomyocytes have to decrease calcium level in the cytosol. And this decrease in calcium, as we know, occurs by two mechanisms. By sodium calcium exchanger and by SARCA pathway. And the concept is that with increase in intracellular sodium concentration, the activity of sodium calcium exchanger decreases, and this causes decrease in calcium export from cytosol to extracellular space, so more calcium remains in the cytosol. So, increase in sodium concentration inhibits the activity of sodium calcium exchanger, and it causes increase in calcium concentration in the cytosol. And at this point, we can say that increase in heart rate limits the loss of intracellular calcium, thereby it increases calcium level in the cytosol. And if calcium level in cytosol increase, to provide relaxation, the more calcium molecules have to be pumped by SARCA into sarcoplasmic reticulum, so the more calcium molecules will be accumulated in sarcoplasmic reticulum for the next contraction, so the higher will be release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol during next contraction. And the higher will be the calcium level in cytosol, the more calcium molecules will bind to troponin, 
the higher will be the force of contraction. And this increase in contractility due to the increase in heart rate called Bowditch effect. So increase amount of calcium molecules are formed by circa intracercoplasmic reticulum. This causes increase in calcium accumulation in circoplasmic reticulum with subsequent increase in calcium induced calcium release. This will create higher calcium concentration in the cytosol, and the higher is calcium concentration in cytosol, the higher is the force of contraction. So it's a mechanism of Bowditch effect that, as we'll say further, has very important clinical significance.